Hi, David Vizard here, and you are watching Power Attack 10. If you care to give me a few minutes of your time, I'll give you the benefit of over 64 years now of race winning, engine building, and racing. Plus all the little tricks and do's and don'ts that go to make up a lot of what goes on here. So bear with me and let's go on with the show. In this episode 58, we are going to deal with the vagrancies of small block four block reliability. Now here's a problem. The better you are at getting horsepower from these small block Fords, the more likely you are to have an unreliable engine. Block strength is not a great, uh, how shall I say, asset. Now, in fact, it's the other end of the scale. My Caribbean crew chief, Mervyn Bonnet, and I, between us, have probably scrapped in the region of 10 blocks because of overpowering them. And I'm talking about 5.0 blocks here. But the same more or less goes for a 351 block. Although not quite as badly. So what can we do to make these blocks survive better? In terms of fixing this braking problem, I've been fortunate enough to know guys who worked at Fords and are familiar with what happens when these blocks are overloaded. And it's not quite what you think, right? The first deal is, is you think that the, the mains caps, and they're basically only uh, two bolt ones, just pull out. But it doesn't actually work like that. St Nothing's ever that simple. The reality is that the mains caps fail first from fatigue. I first noticed this years ago before I had uh, enough information to come to any kind of real conclusions on the subject. And I noticed that the brakes had all of the fracture structure, patterns, or whatever you want to call them, of a fatigue break, not an overload break. So how was this coming about? Well, this is where my contacts at Ford's uh, kind of filled me in on the picture. The block is actually vibrating lengthwise like this, and the caps are doing this, not, and I've, I'm imagining the blocks upside down. They're not being pulled out so much as being broken by, by flexing. And the uh, thing is, is this makes some, how shall I say, primary fixes much easier than you might think. And let's look at those first. The first steps towards a fix for this problem came from Tom at DSS. Now, DSS is well known for all of their uh, uh, Ford stuff they do. And um, I've had uh, quite a bit of stuff from them and it's always top quality. If you want to buy a remanufactured block, right, their block machining is excellent. Now, of course, I have no idea if they handpicked and sent me these, but I doubt it. Right, I don't think Tom's like that. But I've had probably about five block from them and I've checked them all and there's amongst some of the most accurate block machining uh, I've come across. It's all done on one of their CNC machines. Anyway, 
The thing is, is Tom introduced me to an aluminum uh, uh, main girdle, and it doesn't look like it would support anything. I mean, I'm sure if I put it in a vise, I could grab a hold of one end of it and bend it. Not what you'd say was military grade strength. But anyway, you know what? Since we've been using those um, main girdles, we haven't broken a block. And, and now I don't, I'm not gonna say we've been up to huge horsepower numbers here. That's not the case. But we have been up to 650 horsepower pretty regularly with nitrous injected um, uh, small block forwards. And I guess in the last probably 10 years, neither Mervyn or I have broken a block. So there is a point there. Now let's just take a look at this um, aluminum uh, uh, girdle. And uh, let me get your opinion. It looks like it wouldn't save anything, but in fact, it acts as a vibration damper and it prevents those caps from doing this and fatiguing. So let's take a look at one. Believe it or not, what you see here is good for a strength increase equal to about 200 horsepower. And here's one of the DSS stud girdles fitted to the block. Doesn't look like much, but it proves extremely effective. If you're looking for something that looks beefy, then we have successfully used these 5 sixteenths high-grade steel plate girdles from PRW. If you don't already have an engine or even a block, you may be tempted to go and look for such on the basis that Mexican blocks are rumored to have higher nickel content and, as such, are stronger. There's also been much debate on whether or not this is so. If these blocks were made with 1-2% to more nickel than otherwise the case, the difference would only be 4-8 to eight ounces. The casting variations between blocks of different eras and part numbers can easily account for a weight difference as much as 13 to 14 pounds. Another difference to be found with the Mexican block is in the mains caps. Notice how the one on the left, that's the Mexican block, is beefed up in the area arrow and the American block, the one on the right, has that ridge across the side where it's been uh, thinned down above. Externally, you can recognize a Mexican block by a boss similar to this cast on either side of the block. At the end of the day though, there's no substitute for actually measuring the thickness of the casting. At nearly 200 thousandths thick, this is a good block. I've seen them down to as little as 90 thousandths. That's not what you would want for a performance engine. What is known about 302 blocks is that the earlier pre-74 non-roller tappet blocks, which typically weigh in at 130 to 131 pounds, appear a little stronger than the later 124 pound roller blocks. However, if you're looking for something even stronger than the stuff I've just described, then you might want to consider an aftermarket block. Here's a cross section through a dark small block uh, Ford 302. Note how thick the cylinder walls are. You may well ask what you're looking at here. Well, simply, it's the top side of our super modified block. Let's take a look through its features. From the top side of the block, the most obvious move is that there's this high-grade steel plate and it's doweled in in four places and screwed in in four places. Now this is to counteract the motion of the block going like this, right? What it does is basically it does stiffen up the block but mostly 
what it does is it changes the frequency with which the block will vibrate and it cuts the amplitude and that is a saving grace there but that's not the only thing now let's look and see what's inside the block the screwdriver down the water jacket hole reveals that the block has been filled with concrete now the good thing about filling the block with concrete is concrete is an incredibly good vibration damper right the depth of this concrete is such that the water pump holes the, the concrete reaches the level of the bottom of those water pump holes up this end here now let's have a look for the last but most how shall I say unusual mod on this block yes you are seeing things right four bolt mains caps but they are not just four bolt main caps there's something very different about these so let me take one of the caps off and you'll see what that difference is now let's take a close-up and see what's here when we pull the cap off right I did previously loosen it and oh all this brown on here that's not rust that is preservation grease what I want you to look at here is how the block's been machined to leave these studs uh, keyways here now those keyways fit in the cap grooves there and they are extremely tight when all the main caps are in position you can take the bolts out and lift this block up with no bolts in it that is how snug a fit these are on on there now what that does is not only does it uh, stop the block spreading this way but also these caps are such a snug fit up against the face there that the vibration can only go this small amount here so now it's a very high frequency vibration and it the block does not fail like it previously uh, previously did and i knocked that over anyway so there we have it that is why the Bessel block can take so much horsepower I don't want you to come to the conclusion that making a thousand horsepower on a block like this is just going to be a piece of cake and it's all going to hang together and everything else. You need to do the job right. Now, getting horsepower from a turbo motor efficiently means getting the most horsepower for the least boost. And, and how do you do that? What are the things that you have to take care of? Well, mostly getting rid of exhaust efficiently. That means the first step is to have a cylinder head that's properly modified for turbo use. And for that, I suggest you see Powertech 10, episode 45. This will go through all the reasons why what is optimum for normally aspirated is not what is optimum for turbo or indeed any type of supercharger. The second thing is, is having an efficient exhaust system between the engine and the turbo lots of back pressure here means you have to use more boost to get the same power which means the cylinder pressure pressures are up that's what ultimately will break the engine it'll either melt exhaust valves or it will break the block so take care about that um, and uh, lastly I don't want you to assume that the Ford block is the only one that uh, that Jay can modify, right? He's currently doing a, um, a factory original 454 block for me now, which we've bored and stroked to 525 inches. And the plan is that we are going to either nitrous it to about 2,500 horsepower or turbo it to about 3,000. We'll see when the time comes. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. And don't forget, like, subscribe, notify and comment.